Welcome to a new episode of We Got Issues, Season 5, Episode 2. Um, everything was falling apart just before. By the way, I wanted <laughs> to ask before... you, did you say screenshot my shocked face? I should have. I didn't, though. That would have been the, our best thumbnail ever. So, so before we started, um, one, uh, I just want to let everybody know, uh, we have about... 2,300 subscribers on YouTube right now. A majority of you people don't even subscribe to us. You just listen, okay? But that's okay. That's okay. You guys can just listen. But I'm just saying, if you guys want, like, the the latest update on our um, interviews, um, you know, especially for Season 5, we want to interview more artists and whatnot and writers, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button there. So just hit it and then... That, that's it that's it and for everybody on spotify same thing just 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 hit that subscribe in there or just follow us okay um but yeah before we started uh lewis's camera just went out what do you mean like, no it wasn't my camera no, it was no, no, my no. whole house no, no, no. hold on like it just went out and then all of a sudden the screenshot of like lewis's face looks like it was frozen in time like this and and it was like dark i was like well uh his lights went out uh it is hurricane season in miami so that might be it i'm very shocked you came to a very normal conclusion most people think like my house is just bombed <laughs> Something like that. that's or the kind of that's the kind of energy i bring out into life uh Remember but so um but uh, today, uh, we have a very special episode today, again today. Uh, we, have, uh, we have someone who's, uh, man, he's just uh, riding the, the hit wagon right now of like big hits. Like uh, recently, unlike, and I think there's like two books that's not even out that he's written as of yet. And one of them has gone, uh, what, almost 100,000 copies or close to it, which is uh, what's the furthest place from here. Uh, that's out next uh, next month. By the way, we have our exclusive variant cover for that for Miko Hawaiian. So go ahead and uh, go on our website. You can pre-order your uh, <laughs> you can pre-order your copy there now. Um, let's just get him in here and then uh, let's see what's uh, what's going on with all these hits that he's been uh, he's been delivering. Uh, hello there, sir. Are you, are you there with us? I am here. Thanks for having me, guys. It's Matt. It's Mr. Matthew Rosenberg. Everybody, uh, he is uh, joining us today. If you guys are wondering why he can't, uh, you can't see his face. I will tell you this: he did let us know that uh, he did uh, shave and like wash his hair and, and looks All nice right. and everything. Just for but this. he told me he did the same thing that John Cena <laughs> did. He paid extra, so every time there's an image of him, it goes dark. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I do both. I like I'm in a tuxedo, but then also I pay extra so you can't see it. It's he, weird. He, go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes he goes the extra length for uh for yeah. interviews, guys. Have so you, just that you can't see it. Okay. Matthew, have you ever played uh Fable? The the video game? Like that yeah. question? Yes. Uh remember the one uh merchant vendor where he showed a mirror? that's covered and this mirror will make you look beautiful 
but you have to <laughs> look through it in complete darkness. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what this is. That's what this podcast is for me. Oh. I look yeah. amazing. Well, I look well. Amazing. The good, the the good thing Can't is argue the, against that logic. <laughs> the good thing is our Spotify listeners are just like, well, I'm just listening oh, to it. This well, that's matter. normal. Yeah. That's just normal. But just to give everybody an image, he's wearing a tux, mm -hmm. uh, hair slicked back. <laughs> yep. Hair slicked back and really, really look nice, man. I'm on just top really of a sharp. mountain. <laughs> it's like on top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah it's really I'm nice. On top, it's really nice. It's a blue <laughs> mustache. <laughs> yeah, you guys are really missing out. I have an eye patch on for no reason. It's awesome. I look awesome. Yeah, it's top of the mountain, the eye patch. Yeah. I need someone to draw that like right now <laughs> and just have that as your podcast image. Mike That's Tyson cool. tattoo of a yeah, bunch right. of piercings on I the left ear. I don't have the tattoo that Mike Tyson has. I have a tattoo of Mike Tyson's face on mm. my face. Oh. <laughs> it's it's big too. It's like most of my face is Mike Tyson's. Face. It's weird. That was a bad. It's, it's, it's that's just really it, weird. It, that's borderline blackface. It doesn't go. Yeah, it's not, not there. <laughs> it's not there. It's, it's It seems like a good idea. Then it happened, and I was like, oh, I messed up. And yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? It's a tattoo. Well, it sounds. It sounds like a con. Uh, it sounds like a convention story, like one of those things after con thing. Like yeah. what happens? Not that it's gonna <laughs> happen anymore. Reed Pop controls everything, and there are a bunch of Debbie Downers that don't like to party. <laughs> yeah, no, they, don't, they don't want you to get tattoos on, of other people on your face. Mm -mm. But um, how is everything with you today, sir? Are you, are you staying safe uh, during this time? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm good. You know, all things considered, I don't really go anywhere or do anything. So, it's right. just hang, hanging out in my house, <laughs> pretty safe, well, I guess. It's just like Lewis. Lewis doesn't really do too much to as well, right? Like sometimes you know, normally my background is more void than this, but the void sound, <laughs> the echoes are coming in just nicely. Yeah, it looks nice. We, nice. we were just uh we were just talking about um you are almost you're 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 climbing a this this uh mountain of like hits already. It starts with um what's the furthest place from here, and there's like two that's not even out yet. It's gonna be out this time, um this month. Yeah, um, yeah. Task task four Z and um DC versus Vampire. Um, how is it? Uh, 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 I'm assuming it's been crazy for you. Everyone's requesting like interviews and and different stuff. How's it? Uh, yeah. How you've been handling the the, the fame so far? <laughs> uh, well, you know it's comic fame. It's not real fame, so it's not bad. <laughs> but um, no, it's been really it's been really fun. Uh, you know, like I'm always I've always I'm always busy, but doing a bunch of launches of, of sort of high profile books right around each other is a uh it's intense it's sort of you have to pick and choose what what you do and it sucks because you want to sort of give everyone your time and and you know if someone wants to mm -hmm. chat about my book and promote it it's like yeah of course i, right. I love that I, like that means a lot to me and i want to do it but like there's only so many hours in a day so um right but it's, it's been really fun and and uh people seem People are now starting to get to read what's the first place from here and getting to read Task Force C number one and DC vs. Vampires number one. And uh, the reaction has been really great to all three. So that's a that's always a nice feeling. So have you been uh, have you been able to go to conventions or smaller or bigger conventions to talk more about it? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Just no, not home. not this, not this, not yeah, this year. Yeah, I'm just sitting it out. You know, like I'm vaccinated. I'm I'm good to go. But like. I don't know. It's, I, there's a lot there, of there is also a lot of alternatives that he can go. Um, if he DC fan, the member did, I don't know, interviews with artists and writers about their upcoming books. They can advertise it there, and that's what like two, over two million views yeah. without ever leaving your yeah. house. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like you know, I'm I'm trying to take the time that I would normally be because you know, in an average year, I was doing 14, 15 conventions a year, which is a lot of time, and um i'm trying right. to take that time and one you know get more writing done but also you know d give it to like other ways to you know d interacting with retailers interacting right. with, with fans directly trying to do more podcasts and stuff so yeah so I'm still trying to get out there and promote the work without encouraging right. people to go right. into large crowded spaces yeah. where people normally get sick anyway yeah. so do you uh do you miss the crowds and, and stuff like that Yes and no. I mean, like, I, I, I always have a weird, like, mm -hmm. I, I like seeing my friends, like, uh, you know, all my friends doing conventions, and I, right. I, I like meeting other people who read comics. Like, I'm just a big comic book mm -hmm. nerd, so I like talking about that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a weird relationship with the sort of like 
spam, as it were. Like, I, I, I feel real right. weird when people, like, come up and are like, oh, I love your book and, like, sign all this stuff. Like, I'm happy to do it and it's very flattering, but, like, that's just right. sort of not what I'm about as much. Like, I just, right. you know, I don't want to be, like, uh, I don't know. I'd rather hang out and talk to people about comics than, like, hang out and have people talk to me about my comic you know like people come up and be like your comic yeah. is so great it's very flattering but it's like right. it's awkward it's weird for me it's like uh it, it reminds me of like um it reminds me of like tom welling i don't know lewis and uh matthew if, if, if you remember uh, tom welling denied uh the role of clark kent for smallville three times because he just wanted oh, yeah. he just wanted to just go there do the work go home and that's it he doesn't want to do any other presses or any other this thing and be famous and whatnot he just wants to do his work and then yeah. just, yeah. just that's it yeah you know i think that there's i think people get the impression if you don't go out and sign stuff and shake hands and that you're not grateful which is not the case at all like i'm super no. any person who buys my book even if they of don't course. like it i'm like you know like i've been yeah. broke in my life i've been poor i know what it means to mm -hmm. buy a comic and like mm -hmm. it's a commitment and it's money and it, it means a lot that you give me a chance and give us a chance and so i'm super appreciative of everybody and i just hit a point where i was like well i guess i have to go out and do this because it's it's what pe what some people really want they want to meet you and right. get a picture and autograph and stuff so i i i try and do it and i try and be you know friendly and nice and appreciative but i'm like kind of a shy right. dude so like most of the time right. I'm like, oh, i'd rather just be home but yeah like uh i mean like uh are, are, do you do you do you see yourself as more of an introvert kind of person when it comes to like uh fan interaction kind of stuff like you want to you want to talk about like comics and all that stuff but like when you know when people start taking pictures of you kind of thing like a paparazzi style and all that stuff that becomes a little bit too much kind of thing i mean i don't have paparazzi but yeah i mean <laughs> I, 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 maybe the, the <laughs> like the you know i think no i don't i never mind it particularly but yeah i mean i'd always you know like i'm much happier going to a comic shop and like right. chatting with people in the aisles of a comic shop than i am like right. sitting at a table with a line of people waiting to talk to me it's like that feels yeah like, a, like i don't want anyone to have to wait to talk to me i say stupid shit yeah. like but you don't yeah. want to fucking wait and have to hear it like right right <laughs> um I remember, I remember the first time I actually met you, and I, I know this. Don't, don't worry, I have a very forgettable face. No, you'll, you'll never remember me. Uh, it was the very last big con. Uh, it was 2019 in uh, Fan Expo in Canada. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I met you there and whatnot, and I, you know, I talked to you for quite a bit too as well. Yeah. And I was wondering why everyone's everybody wasn't like crowding around you and whatnot, um, and they were just like. You know, I think that was during the time when you did Uncanny X Men. I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was right after I think I did Uncanny. Yeah, it was right after that. But everybody just went to like the artists, uh, artists um, to get their book signed. My, uh, which leads to my question though: uh, Do you think that writers nowadays don't get that much of a recognition than the artists? No, I don't think that. Um... You know, I think it. I think it's it's different. People like different things, and there's different mm -hmm. levels of stuff. You know, like and, it, right. and it, you know, like I do enough shows to know that it like it varies show to show. That like you know there are, mm -hmm. you know, like it. Uh, yeah, Fan Expo was sort of a very chill show for me, which is nice and right. fun. It's and in the I, basement. <laughs> it's in the basement, but I appreciate it. But then, like you know, when I do New York Comic Con, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's like three hour lines and it's like well that's a little much and that's weird. a little yeah i know yeah and it's, you know it's all it's it's all relative but like i i don't know you, you know and there's also shows where it's like you know i all i i see all the same people at shows like i see all the same pros and it's like there's right. you go to one town and it's like oh this person is so much po more popular in this town and then you go to a different mm -hmm. town and this person is so much more popular so it's always it's always sort of funny to to see that stuff because uh, like if i paid more attention to where i was i'd be like oh i guess i don't have to go back to that place but yeah. like you know like when i it, it's also like dependent on the characters and the books like yeah you know, I, I remember going to denver and like it was nonstop punisher fans when i was writing punisher and then wow. like two weeks later i was in uh chicago and like didn't sign a single punisher comic but like in denver it was like five people cosplaying as a punisher as like punisher for my book and like all these mm -hmm. people you know like people with tattoos from the book and then you go right. to Chicago and no one mentions it and it's like well it's weird like even in the you know two cities in the yeah. midwest kind of it's just a totally different crowd so 
That, that's uh, crazy. I've, I've never noticed that in, in conventions that there's actually sectionals on like what's popular and what. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Florida, yeah. they do it. It happens all the time. Does it? Remember how uh, popular Punisher was uh, in the store? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. And then but the like, moment you get to Hialeah, yeah. it's like, what's a Punisher? Yeah, yeah. See, it's, see this, the thing was, Lowe's, I, I was telling you. a lot of population, though. When I, when I first met uh, Matthew was in uh, Fan Expo. Remember I told you about Fan Expo, Lewis, that's uh, in Canada, that it's in the basement. Uh, <laughs> so you oh. have to go through like, you have to go through like six escalators and then All you see like... All I remember like... is trying to call you like three times for something you asked me to call you about and then couldn't get to you. No, there's like no reception. Three hours there. later. Yeah, you're in like a bunker. Yeah, you're, you're like, the, if there was if there was something going on upstairs, you would not know what's going on at you're all. You're just you you you're just considered dead. Yeah, <laughs> every person that doesn't pick up my phone calls, they're dead anyway. Yeah, yeah they're dead. Yeah, they die. There's um, no point. If you call me, I would think you're trying to haunt me, so I don't pick it up. <laughs> um, I want to know about uh, uh, what's the furthest place from here? Sure. When did um? When did the idea come to, comes to play with you and uh, uh, Mr. Boss there? Yeah, so um, we did a book a bunch of years ago uh, called Four Kids Walking to a Bank that um, people really liked and sold pretty well. And, um, you know, we, we, we had a lot of fun doing it. And we just hit a point where we were like, okay, well, let's figure out what the next thing is. And you know we were still working on the book but like what do we want to do next because that that book was like really successful and we did it with black mask and black yeah. mask was like you should do you know if you want to keep going with the book it was it was scheduled to be a mini series but they're like it's very profitable so like keep going and but we had an end in mind and we were like yeah we don't want to like change that we we, we want to tell yeah. the story we set out to tell and right uh so we were just like okay let's figure out what our next book is and uh we spent a long time sort of trying to think on that and and designing stuff and we went down a couple different ideas and and things that we thought were kind of cool mm -hmm. um but then we ended up with like a thing that felt very like almost too similar and right. so we, we kind of like had to redirect and that you know that's when what's first place is probably 2018 early 2018 right. that we sort of started working on it and then you know we we pitched it to image and and they greenlit it and we're very excited and then you know, I had a bunch of like Marvel stuff come up and uh, got real busy with that. And then uh, Tyler had a, a book that he was like really passionate about doing called Dead Dog's Bite, which he did at Dark Horse that just came out. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. so it just took us a long time to sort of get get it all together and in the, into the shape we wanted to. But like, yeah, it's something we've been working on for a really long time. Okay. Yeah, because I remember that book. I don't know, Lewis, do you remember when we were when we had a store because we used to have a brick and mortar uh we sold it like uh just before the pandemic hit do you remember uh, when i used to work for a store okay let's let me put my my imaginary <laughs> cap on like the store that made me work the hardest in my entire life okay hit me. <laughs> we, we sold that store and then people were asking us about four kids i don't uh -huh. know if, do you remember that lewis when people were asking us about it, it blew up. I don't know if you were working that day. No, but that, when, that was when, definitely when I finally had a break. <laughs> when, when Matthew said that, uh, when you mentioned, sir, that uh, it did really well. No, it did way better than that. It blew up. It was yeah, one it's... of those. It was one of those books that just people kind of wanted right away, and um, I think that um, majority of the people were waiting. You are right. The, the people were waiting for another uh tyler boss and another uh uh matthew rosenberg um book um so i'm glad that, that this came about but um in terms of like the writing process for this was there like any inspiration in terms of like how this was put together because i read the the first issue of it mm -hmm. and it was it was it was really amazing it was like the what i did was when i first read the the, the first issue i'm like i already know who i'm gonna do an exclusive variant for this and i called mm -hmm. Mika Sawayan right away. I'm like, I have this amazing idea yeah. um, for for a variant cover. And he read it. He's like, this is really good. I was like, yeah. He's like, I, I got something for you. So he started drawing this, um, uh, these three. Uh, he, he forgot what the name was. And he goes, and he sent me the file. And he goes, oh, I called them piggies. I was like, piggies yeah. it is. <laughs> great. So, uh, but uh, where did you, uh, was there any inspiration in terms of like how this was formed? Or was there like, 
this is something that almost kind of came organically when you thought about you wanted to do something after four kids you know we like i was saying the we ended up starting to do something that was sort of too similar to four kids and so we mm -hmm. wanted to do something that felt very different in the end mm -hmm. and so like that was a lot of in terms of just the like actual like trying to figure out what we wanted to do a lot of it was sort of let's do all the opposite stuff so like right. where four kids is like a crime story set in the real world mm -hmm. and it's uh, you know crime comedy small cast miniseries we were like let's do an ongoing book that's a huge cast and a big epic mm -hmm. and throw in some like horror and fantasy mm -hmm. and sci-fi stuff and make it post-apocalyptic and and weird and um so like yeah in, in that regard the where the story comes from is sort of very meticulously like planned in a way that's kind of unusual but from there we sort of spent a lot of time just kind of like shooting ideas back and forth me and tyler and just coming up with things that we thought were interesting and cool and and sort of right. like you know designing the world and designing characters and then coming up with a story for like why they would be that way and why things would work so there's a lot of like mm -hmm. The book has a lot of mystery to it. It has a lot of sort of unexplained things that we're going to get into and and sort of that drives you as as you explore it. But but a lot of but it's not one of those things where we're just being weird for the sake of being weird. Like all of this is like right. plays into a story in the universe in a real way that we have answers for. And and that right. that stuff is very meticulously sort of planned right. and plotted out. Do you find it a lot better to write uh independently versus say for marvel or dc like there's no attachment to like what you can write and be like hey i have this idea i'm gonna write this and it's just gonna be approved right away versus like <laughs> dc or marvel and they're like yeah i don't know if you should say that kind of thing i mean yeah in terms of just the like you know especially at a place like image where they just they want you to just do the thing you want to do more than anything they're just like be mm. make the book you want to make like how can we get obstacles out of your way like that's very liberating but no i mean i think i think both have their upsides and their downsides and i, I really like working it you know I, I loved when i was working at marvel and i wrote a lot of my favorite characters and i'm, I'm having a ton of fun at dc um so they're just very different sort of the have different upsides and different drawbacks i guess like it's great to be able to write characters like and not have to explain who Batman is. Like when I write a Batman comic, right. I don't ever have to be like, well, he's a rich kid and his parents were killed and he's like, got all these emotional problems about it. Like you right. could just put Batman in the comic and people would be like, okay, I get it. And and there's all this like heavy lifting that's already done for you where people are fans and now you just have to right. play off those strengths and try and challenge yourself to do something new with the character that they've seen. And that's really fun um, in its own way. And meanwhile like doing your own thing you have to get people to care about every part of it you have to sell right. them on every single angle and that's difficult but also right. in a way like yeah they're they're both great they're just very different sort of right ideas it's just you know? one's going blindly and then the other one's a paved road that you just gotta plant trees around it exactly yeah, yeah i mean one is one is getting in a car and just driving and one is like having a destination and a roadmap and right. like both are super great but like it's great to go places right. and have a car <laughs> but it's also fun to just wander um, right i've so. i've always i've always wondered for writers um do, do you feel any pressure in terms of bringing out a a, a hit book or anything like that because it seems like you know it's one of those things where you know you 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 take on the character and then people really love it and then they're like okay what's next and you're just going okay what is next kind of thing is there like any pressure on you in terms of like just bringing on another hit kind of uh of a book no i mean the pressure you know i have to eat like these things pay my bills so that that's <laughs> yeah. pressure in that regard but no i mean i the pressure i always feel is doing things that people care about and i don't Right. Obviously, people are paying us money to make the things and investing in them, and they want them to be profitable. Whether it's you know Warner right. Brothers or Disney or or Image or Black Mask or whoever I work for, and mm. I want I want them to get their money back, and I want it to be a good process. I don't want to like, right. but really, my concern is always like, is the person who buys this going to like it? And that's sort of where right. my concern ends. And if it's ten people like it, 
I'm like that's great if 10 people buy it and 10 people like it that's awesome i have a million people like it and a million people buy it that's awesome too like right. uh i mean i you know my publishers probably don't want to hear this but i'd rather have a book that 100 people really love than a book that a million people thought was okay <laughs> yeah. like that's just for me but like Exactly. I, you know, every publisher would rather have a book that a million people thought was okay but yeah they want <laughs> they, they want to hit all the time so yeah um does it um do you ever experience mental blocks kind of thing because i know you're like I'm, I'm not quite sure how far along you are writing uh what's the uh what's the furthest place as well as task Force z and uh, dc versus vampire but do you ever get like a mental block where you're just like um i don't know what to do at this point right now yeah i mean that's you know that's the job. I, th I always think it's interesting because people talk about sort of writer's block mm -hmm. as if it's this kind of mystical thing that like <laughs> is is some sort of obstruction. And it's like, no, that's that's the job. It's like if you build houses, mm -hmm. like you have to carry dirt, like it's hard. Like if you, you know, mm -hmm. you have to move cement, if you, you know, are you a truck driver, you have to stay up and drive long distances and deal with traffic jams. It's like whatever it is, like there's a hard part. It's not just sitting down and typing. It's it's figuring out things and and feeling satisfied with them. And sometimes you're going to sit there and be like, I don't know what to do here. I don't. But that's part of it. And, um, you know, spending four years, five years at Marvel, however long I was at Marvel. And now I've been at DC for a year. Right. Uh, it's not really a luxury you get at those companies to sort right. of be like, I don't know what to do. Like the in 30 days, someone's going to need a script to draw. And for me right now, I'm working on five books at DC. Wow. Um, so I have to turn in a script every four days um, right. for them. Like that's just my schedule is every four days you turn in a script. And like I can't sit there and be like, yeah, I really needed to take the weekend off and figure it out. It's like I don't right. get weekends off and I don't have time to figure <laughs> it out. Um, and it's not, you know, creatively, like, obviously it would be better if I could sit there and be like, I took two years to make this the perfect script, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the machine that is, is yeah. superhero comics. Um, yeah. I have, so. I have like a lot of admiration for writers because, um, you know, you, you see writers like Scott Snyder where, you know, he's promoting his comicsology right now and there's like mm -hmm. 10 books coming out in October. I'm like, how did you write 10 books? Yeah, yeah. Like, where is these ideas coming from? Right. So, uh, you know, I've always, I always try to like, you know, I have like a lot of admiration for writers like, such as yourself. I mean, right now you're, you're doing Task Force, uh, Task Force Z and uh, Vampire versus D uh, DC versus Vampires. Does it always? Does it sometimes mix up when you're when you're writing? You're just like, well, this doesn't happen, and then you hand it over, and they're like, uh, this is no. sound like Task Force Z kind of thing. <laughs> this is no. DC versus Vampire. <laughs> no uh you kind of get in the mindset and you know where you're at i mean i've hit a point i've hit points in the past where like when i was writing on candy x-men we hit a point where there was five artists on the book and it was mm -hmm. a you know it was a double ship book so it was coming out twice a month at just an incredible speed so like no two artists could handle it because it was moving too quick so it was four or five artists and they were moving at different speeds and so it was a kind of thing where i, I remember i was writing issue 21 before I wrote issue 17 and mm -hmm. then I had to write it part of issue 19 and that gets really like you sit down and you're like I feel like how I are you going to connect all these things yeah and you're just like <laughs> did I say this already do I need to say this and like you come to a point where you're like does this make you like you really have to pay attention at the end like to be like mm -hmm. did I fill in all the blanks like did I connect all the dots exactly um but no otherwise when you sit down like you know I spend you know, like I don't, uh, I'm not proud of it, but I, I probably work, mm -hmm. I mean, I work seven days a week. Um, I don't take days off and I work, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day on, on this right. stuff. I'm like, I'm on a lot of projects. I like that. I like working, mm -hmm. but you spend a lot of time with these books. It's not something where you just like pop in. Like when I read stuff, I'll, I'll re pick up an issue of a book and be like, I don't remember what happened. I don't remember. And I'll get stuff confused. <laughs> but when it's the stuff I write, it's like, no, I'm spending hundreds of hours focusing on this. Like, I remember what it is as soon as I open the file. Like, I yeah. know where I am and what I need to do. Does that get awkward in the convention section uh, uh, season when somebody comes up to you and be like, hey, remember when you wrote this and this? What do you mean? You're like, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. know. You know, it, 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 it's funny because people... There's a point now where there's certain things, like some stuff I'll always remember and be like, oh yeah. And then there's certain things where like someone came up to me and mentioned something I wrote in an issue of Rocket Raccoon, like some joke. And I was like, I don't think I wrote that. And they like <laughs> pulled it out and showed it to me. And I was like, oh, 
okay yeah i didn't remember that <laughs> and they were like they were so offended and they were like you don't remember this i love this moment and i was like i've written 120 comics since then like i'm sorry like i, I don't know that's like, that's crazy i can just imagine that person just yelling like in family guy he's a faker yeah, yeah, yeah faker. You know, that's probably the one thing that probably is like the least wanting from like wanting to go back to cons is like you get these random questions and people expect you to know them and you're like i don't remember yesterday yeah yeah <laughs> yeah get, i mean the first get too much the uh the the like who would win in a fight stuff you know mm -hmm. like, that's just not how i think about these things and these characters and like yeah i just yeah. you know i used to try and have an answer and now i'm like i don't know man who do you want to win <laughs> I, want I, can write, I can write anything for you bro uh, yeah. like a... I, I can write a loophole yeah. <laughs> just get a blank piece of paper and just write it here you go it's man. like it just write they both died here you go yeah i just I, you know like that's an original right there I, i've gone on, on that question from like trying to be fun and funny about it to just being like whose book is it in and it's like well you know guess what if it's in the hulk's book he's gonna win the fight and if it's in thor's book he's gonna win the fight like yeah. that's the rules that's how it works yeah. or they tie like, yeah they always tie. They always yeah. tie and now i just now i just feel like who do you want like I, I wrote a bunch of century stuff when i was leaving marvel out the door and century fans are very like passionate about like how powerful is he and what can he do and how can he do these things and i was just like and i love the century as a character and i just was like i don't want to do this like i don't want to figure out what you want me to say and like disappoint you if i say the wrong thing or the like correct answer for the century would be how gorephobic was he in that issue <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and so i just I, I don't know so i'm just like you know when people are like did this could the century punch a hole in reality i'm like <laughs> yeah sure bro i'll do it is that what <laughs> sure, you want from me? Yeah, if you want him to, sure, he can probably do that. You don't want I'll, him to, then no, he can't do that. He I'm wants more to eat I'm, a son I'm, while he's doing that too. <laughs> like, I'll write that. I'm more surprised that there's hardcore Century fans. Oh, like, they're what? super hardcore. Yeah, they're very intense. really. Yeah, anyone who's written the Century like knows them. Like me and me and Donnie talk about it all the time about like because we did a bunch yeah. of Century stuff together and like the Century yeah. fans are just like in our DMs, like messaging yeah. us, finding our emails and emailing us. And Don yeah. is just like, I don't know what they want from me. You also <laughs> seem to forget yeah, because that, like... uh... yeah. that, that would be around his, yeah, because that would be around his realm, right? Same time. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, Lewis. Go ahead. Sorry. Is it my, what internet? You Is it my backed up? Um, you also seem to forget there's hardcore Moon Knight fans. I'm a hardcore Moon Knight fan. And they were so insulted when their fan base increased. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Moon Knight fans are intense. I love Moon Knight. That was a book I really wanted to do at Marvel. That was the book. Uh, I love Jed. Jed's a buddy, and I, I think he's been killing it. Um, but that was the book that I wanted. And I was like, oh, I really want Moon Knight. Uh, so so one of the things... Red Hood instead, so. One of the things that we uh, we have in our show is basically, as you can see in the bottom there, um, uh, we do we have a series called The Rise of Indie Comics. We're in part five now. We've been talking about this, I don't know, God knows how long lewis like almost a year and a half now or two years now you've been talking this, about uh, lengths for two and a half years i have committed uh five minutes of my brain to that topic <laughs> and so everything like... that you've been hearing out that seems like a good point <laughs> is me blacking out and then just agreeing with you so the conversation can end <laughs> so there's this um there's this rise in like indie comics for the past years and whatnot um, I'm not quite sure if this is something that you've been noticing too as well. Do you think that's, um, you know, what do you think that, uh, contributes to this like indie movement that's been going on lately? Um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, it's something I have noticed when I sort of, I sort of got really back into, I grew up as a big Marvel fan and a big, you know, Marvel and DC guy. And, and sort of the thing that sucked me back into Marvel when I was, when I was younger was like the architects era, the Hickman and Fraction and Brubaker and Bendis and Jason Aaron and mm -hmm. Rick Remender and Kelly Sudeconic and all those people dance a lot, just like firing on all cylinders and doing these amazing books. And it was really like exciting. I think it was really just a, amazing time in marvel it's maybe my favorite era of marvel comics and um sort of one by one those guys and and lady all migrated away to doing more indie stuff for you know other places uh, brian dent and and jason 
Aaron didn't as much, but like they do, obviously. But uh, everyone else sort of went over to Image, was doing Image stuff, and and like there was a really big boom in that stuff. And you know, Brian Vaughn had been at Marvel, and he was doing Saga, and Kirkman was at Marvel, and then he started doing Invincible and Walking Dead. Um, and that sort of was the thing. Uh, there was a big rise, a boom there for for indie stuff. And then uh, I feel like it sort of died down and normalized, and the the movies kind of took over, and the movies became more popular, and the dialogue and the Mm -hmm. sort of the marvel and dc of it all swelled and i think we're at a point now where marvel and dc have built up a bunch of of big high profile creators who are great and amazing and have the same sort of passionate fan base and all those creators are now feeling confined a little bit by the marvel and dc of right. it. they want to stretch out and and do other stuff and so you're seeing you know donnie kate's doing you know all his stuff and and james tynan and um scott snyder and and just an amazing al ewing and just an amazing crew of like great writers who are using the the marvel and the dc of it all to be a springboard to promote their indie books and right. um and i think you find a fans who are just excited about that they're they're excited about writers yeah. they're excited about talent they're excited about great artists yeah. who, who want to go do that stuff and so yeah, yeah. It, se it seems like that was just uh yeah it seems like the the dc and marvel becomes a springboard versus the indies becoming a springboard to go to the um, dc and marvel now yeah. it's like the opposite there's, there's a weird power shift there i mean it's funny because people sort of use indie books i mean most of us who do the big two stuff have indie books that get us noticed by marvel like i was doing i did a book called mm -hmm. we can never go home that a bunch of marvel people really liked and they sort of brought me in off that a little bit and then when four kids hit they were like oh yeah, yeah like they signed me exclusive and that's the way and donnie was doing his book god country was the book for him and god country know, yeah um you know ed brisson was doing like sheltered and the violent and you know everyone has these books that sort of get them noticed to uh, teeny howard had assassinistas and the skeptics and Right. Um, you know, everyone sort of has those books that get them noticed, and then Marvel and DC do a great job of elevating those people to a point mm -hmm. where then they are a big enough brand that they don't need a Marvel yeah. and DC as much. Um, right. So yeah, it's a funny thing that you use the indies to get noticed, and then you use the big two to get big enough to use the indies to be the yeah. end goal, as it were. Um, yeah. But I think, even for, I also think even we're for in artists weird, too. Yeah, for artists as well, for sure. I think we're also in a weird um, period of, of uh, I feel like Marvel and DC are, are making a conscious decision a little bit to be less about talent and more about the characters, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do that, the talent will go to a place where they are the focus. Like it's right you know, when you exactly. spend a lot of time telling creators like you're kind of interchangeable they'll be like okay well then interchange me and i'll go do something where i'm not so right they they step out and i think we're seeing that a lot at, at marvel and and dc to a degree yeah do you do you prefer do you prefer writing for uh, uh writing your own content versus you know like uh, a marvel or dc where everything's already paid for you like do you prefer kind of just like hey i want to start something new i want to start i want to tell the story does that does no, that I something like, that's yeah i like them both i like them both um they're just very different um you know it's it, it's it's funny because it's it's marvel and dc i mean at the end of the day like they're licenses it's this it's no different than writing mm -hmm. the you know stranger things comic or the doctor who comic or gi joe but right. to comics fans they don't feel that way because they're right. comics first and so people right. make this funny distinction of being like and i do it where i'm like you know i have people come and offer me like oh do you want to come write this licensed property and i'm like not really like i don't i don't play that video game mm -hmm. or i didn't read that you know see that movie or i don't know what that book is right. and i just there's not a lot of licenses that i care about like i love gi joe and i would love to write a gi joe book at some point and like ninja turtles like i love that i love them but like there's not a lot of stuff you could come and be like, do you want to do a Dune comic? And I'd be like, not really. Like, I love Dune, but that's not really what I want to do. Um, right. But for some reason, Marvel and DC just operates differently on a lot of creators' levels, where it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a license. It feels like it feels like a different thing entirely. And so right. I, whereas I turn down a lot of projects where I'm just like, yeah, I don't think I'm the right guy for that. I don't, you know, I don't need to do a Power Rangers comic or whatever. But like, right. I get really excited about Red Hood. I get really excited about Batman. I love, yeah. you know, 
I right. love getting to write Green Arrow. Like those are fun for yeah. me, and so it's yeah. it's just going where you're sort of having fun. I think is the key exactly. Of staying around. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to lie that uh, I would. I would love to see a Matthew Rosenberg Power Rangers. I want to see your I was, take on I Power I was thinking Rangers. the same thing. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> they they talked to me about it. Boom. Uh, I really like the folks at Boom. I I love the company. They're a great company. And when they were launching it, they came to me and I. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch Power Rangers when I was a kid. And so you don't like, have to. There is no <laughs> common sense. That it's about the fighting. No one cared about the teenage drama. Yeah. I, 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 I was just like, I don't think I'm the guy for this. And they were like, no, no, we think you'd be great. And I was like, I don't, I don't really see it. Um, and I passed on it. And I'm, you know, and then uh, Kyle Higgins, who's a good buddy, ended up taking it and hit it out of the park and did an awesome job. And I'm like, oh, thank God, because I would not have done as good as Kyle did. I would have <laughs> driven this into the ground, and Power Rangers fans would be mad at me. And he did awesome. So, oh, I didn't know that uh, they approached you before Kyle Higgins too, as well. Before uh, I don't because... know that they approached me before. I think they approached us at the same time to do different things. Actually. One of you said yes, the other one said no. Yeah. So uh, I guess it worked out for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great for Kyle, and it's and Kyle's killing it now, and he's got you know Radiant Black and. I mean, uh, you could also still, you know, contact them. So there's something about, you know, Power Rangers. <laughs> Love to read it. <laughs> I, I say, I say, if uh, I say, watch like a few episodes of it, because uh -huh. I think a Matthew Rosenberg Power Rangers would be amazing. That's just no, that's you're, just, you're just you'll be so confused. <laughs> you'll have so many more questions than like that answer. Those two episodes will ever answer. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that was sort of my assumption. I was like, I just don't get it, guys. And they're like, it's pretty straightforward. And I was like, yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Like, watch like this that. first season, and then you'll have a thousand questions about the floating head tube. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. So yeah, exactly. so he doesn't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, he's like floating head tube. What the hell is that? Yeah, <laughs> up a thousand do... questions. Hey, yeah. maybe you could do like a what if kind of thing, Power Rangers kind of thing, like an Elseworlds. That would be Elseworlds, amazing. Elseworlds Power Rangers. I could do an that. Elseworlds Power Rangers. Like you just write it. It's like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to do this anyways. Yeah. Uh, I could, yeah, I could do that. I could guess what the uh, Power Rangers is and make that a comic. So, like, so many <laughs> of their villains are just concept based. Yeah. Yeah. Like a giant crab monster. Goldar is like a giant golden, like little <laughs> eagle thing. Well, so well, much, here's the thing, Louis. So weird. Here's the thing, Louis. Uh, you're very close with Ross Ritchie. Go ahead, man. You can pitch it to him now. You no, no, I'm not going to pitch him a, a Power Ranger villain. <laughs> it's just going to no, be bear-based no. again. No, pitch him the Elseworlds story with Matthew Rosenberg. There you go, man. Matthew, you guys are, he you, doesn't you guys are good need friends. A pitch. It, one, Matthew Rosenberg has to agree. And we're going to keep talking <laughs> about Matthew Rosenberg like he's not here. I'm here. <laughs> no, 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 he's not. Um, what the is echoes uh, of what Matthew is... Rosenberg are out there somewhere. <laughs> I, I want to know, sir. Like, uh, how does it feel that uh, a couple of days ago, uh, news broke that uh, what's the furthest place has is reaching almost a hundred thousand copies, and I think it's going to second printing now, right? Almost third. Uh, well, it's weird. So we have these limited edition records that like there's a mm -hmm. deluxe version that has a uh, seven inch mm -hmm. and we, uh, making a record takes so much longer than making a comic, especially like now in the pandemic, like where right. it used to take like two or three months. Now it takes like, it can take up to nine. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had to guess how many records there'd be. And we, we used all this, like we asked all these people and we asked all these like big shops and talked to diamond and mm -hmm. talked to image and talked to record labels and record stores right. and everybody. And we, we put all that data together and we're like, okay, this is how many records we should print. And there was like, I was like, I want to be safe, make sure there's enough. So we printed way over what they told us. And then the orders started coming in and we were like, okay, we're doing fine. And then image was like, we might have to allocate these. Like there might not be enough. And so I was like, you should tell people that. And <laughs> they sent yeah, out yeah. an allocation notice. And then of course the orders went insane. Mm -hmm. And cause people scrambled to be like, well, if I want five, I'm gonna order 50 in the hopes that I get five. Yeah. And I'm still waiting on allocation on a couple records. Yeah, yeah. it's, br it's brutal. And so, you know, it's the kind of thing that in the, in the music business and record stores and stuff, like they understand it. Like that that's, it's a norm to be allocated on records. Like record stores are not confused by those, but comic shops, it's like very frustrating. It's a very difficult thing. And so we had, we hit this point where we were just allocating stores like crazy and it was a bummer. And obviously we don't want to be doing that and stores are bummed. And so, mm -hmm. 
uh, I was never going to reprint the records. It was going to be a limited edition thing, but like so many people wanted them that we were like, okay, let's see. And so what we're repressing now is the record. <laughs> I mean, it comes right, with the right. book, it's the book and the record. So that's on yeah. a second printing, but that's actually going to be not for a while because they have to get made. So those are probably not going right. to get until February. So oh, people wow. are like, oh, it's back to second printing. And I was like, it's not actually the second printing of the book. It'll probably be the third printing or, or higher of the book because yeah, like people, the orders on the book are still going up. So we've mm -hmm. already sent it to print. So we're probably going to have a second printing pretty soon on the regular book so that the second printing that's coming will not be the second printing that comes out, if that makes sense. It'll be like the third printing. Th then. Third, yeah, third or fourth or, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I'm hoping that people right. get enough copies. and Also, people don't understand that that's a scheduled time that the printers get for you specifically. And then all oh, you want to back in, wait in queue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we we had a thing where we we're like, you know, we 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 get a couple months shaved off because we don't need to get new plates and new new parts for the record, and we don't have to do test pressings because they've built all that. But they're still like, there's other orders in the queue. Like we can't just immediately yeah. go again. So we're yeah, we're back in the queue, and it just takes a long time. And like, there's not enough yeah. vinyl. Like, uh, I don't think people understand. Like, there's not enough paper. There's not enough vinyl. There are major supply yeah. shortages of everything. Mm -hmm. Like. It's yeah. about to get real weird. Um, yeah, it's December it's is going to get yeah. really, really bad. Yeah, it's going to get yeah. real bad. And like, you know, I stock up on meat. Stock up on meat. Not a joke. No, stock up on meat. Meat manufacturing is super bad right now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff is really backed up, and anything that comes in from overseas, like the ports are backed up. It's mm -hmm. real crazy. And so, like, it's funny because the record, like, we're allocated, and stores were yelling at me. And I was like, you guys know that, like, this is the tip of the iceberg, right? I understand why mm -hmm. you're frustrated, but, like, mm -hmm. you might not have, like, some books in December. Like, you're going to have hard time. Like, order what you want now for the holidays. Yeah. Because, like, you may not be able to get it. Like, books are starting to ship late because they're not getting paper in time. Um, yeah, there's, there's actually reports that came out, I think, today or yesterday about how there's not enough cardboards coming in too yeah, as well. Yeah, cardboard to, to put box things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to box things now. So, and then, you know, Amazon being as big as they are, they always get like first dibs in there. So that yeah. means paper, comic book paper, physical copies mm -hmm. will also be allocated now too as well, or mm -hmm. the price will might increase too. So, yeah. uh, no, definitely, I understand that. So, um, it's just that um, I think that, um, you know, when I saw uh, when I saw that uh, you're hitting almost 100,000 copies, you know, I, I saw that news. I was like, oh, I'm not really surprised. It was like a really, it's a really good story and whatnot. But um, this was this something that you always kind of um, envision yourself? Like, hey, I, I think I have a big hit in here. I think so. I yeah, think it's going to be good. I, I don't No, I don't think about that stuff at all. Um, you no. know, like I, first of all, the, the whole market is so weird in terms of sales and who's selling what. And like you see books mm -hmm. that are doing just monstrous numbers and you're like, that's weird. And like, I don't know who's re i don't know anyone who's reading that book and then there's books that are brilliant and you're like right they don't do well at all and you're like everyone i know loves that book and no one's buying it, you know so it's just very weird right. and like you know you can sit and look at the sales charts and and like be baffled by it all day so like no i mean we went into it and uh you know when we started talking to image tyler was like you know what do you think we're gonna sell because we were trying to figure out how long we're gonna do the book for and right. we were like uh, I said, you know, if the book doesn't make money, uh, we have to have an exit plan pretty fast. So, like, we mm -hmm. wanted, like, we have to have an, well, like, we know what the end of the book is, but, like, mm -hmm. we'd have to change the story. So, we're not doing a book for two years where we're losing money. You just got to get to, the, if it does not make any money, you just know how to make, get to the end faster. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, you just cut out a lot of the middle and, and make it hopefully make sense and make it work and so we were right. doing like we spent the whole time being like okay so we're gonna do this and this and this is our plan if it does great this is our plan if it does okay this is our plan if it does bad and so there were like three different outlines that we have for the series and image just kept being like just do the book you want to do just do the book you want to do and we were like well we are but like we don't want to spend two years losing money like we have friends like we have built yeah. And uh, finally, Tyler was like, I know they, they were like, you know, we can't tell you how the book's going to do. We have no idea. And so we asked them for like 
you know, projections of any sort. And they were like, you know, on the, they were like, we don't love to do that for a lot of reasons. They're like, we don't want people to like get their hopes up for something that doesn't happen or be disappointed or we don't want to like, you know, we just don't like to do that. And we were like, can you ballpark us like what you think a book by people our size would be doing? And they were like, yeah and they gave us a projection and they were like this is the low end and i was like that's really low like if we did that mm -hmm. i would be very disappointed and they were like this is the high right. end and i was <laughs> like oh if we did that i'd be like that would be amazing and mm -hmm. um we exceeded their high end which hey. i think, uh, yeah you just scrap you just scrap all the other exit plans You're like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean like early on we like the jeff boyson who's the the head of sales and is amazing person at image mm -hmm. he just called me one night and he was like hey are you still thinking about like egg ending the book at issue seven and i was like maybe and he was like you need to stop like the book <laughs> is great and people <laughs> there. he's like you need to keep just going plan pl yeah just plan to keep going like get that out of your head ambiguous no number yeah yeah <laughs> just keep it going and and he was like very like you guys are spending a lot of energy and a lot of time, like make the best book possible and get out of your heads. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And that was great advice. And you know, Jeff has been a big champion for us and we owe him a ton and yeah. Uh, but you know, we hit a number at a certain point where he was like, uh, you know, we hit a, we hit a number at a certain point where he was like, you know, you guys yeah, are keep fine. going you guys are fine yeah. like he, he could see the numbers internally and was like you have no reason to worry you're fine you have money like yeah, I, you, would you, love you, to imagine the I know you're never going to share this and i don't want you to but i just would love to, the low projection was like 100 books and you were like i'm gonna go home now and cry on that no, 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 <laughs> to be honest the, the low projection was still flattering like i have friends oh, who, came, right. who came in below that but, but still I very was disappointing like, <laughs> well, I knew we were going to work really hard to try and sell it. And so it's like, you like to think that that matters. But I was like, we're going to do like all sorts of like outreach to stores and like a ton of press and all this stuff. And so we were like, I was like, with all that, if we hit the low projection, that means that we're like much lower than other books, you know, because I was like, <laughs> with the extra work that other creators right. aren't doing, if we're in the low end of that, that would be kind of a bummer. But right. uh, we weren't, so... And it, you know, as a, if we as were, a, it would have been fine too. Yeah, has a possibility that this book may get picked up. Has that ever reached your mind? For like, TV for, a for a TV show or a movie? Yeah, I mean that stuff happens always. Because <laughs> uh, this, the after reading the first issue, I mean, it has big potential to be like a Netflix kind of thing. I mean, like I think that would be. I mean, we had I think offers. Be really we had offers before the book was before any human had read it, other than me and Tyler. Oh, really? yeah like there was already people reaching out that's just oh. the, that's just the way the industry works though it's just like oh that's just the way oh, they, that's they really? want it before anybody else can get to it yeah they want it before anyone else can get to it like they're really? they, they want to know what it is and then once like a bunch of the buzz came in then it was just you know off the races but i don't know yeah. i don't i don't pay a ton, a ton of attention to that stuff so it's are you, you know, are you allowed to let us know if it is going to get picked up or maybe i mean discussion? it will definitely be optioned <laughs> <laughs> like, is it on a streaming I, I, service that i currently own no we don't <laughs> we don't have a we don't have a deal we have people we're talking to um that are and just very, let you know, i have every subscription service so you could say yes and i still wouldn't know which one you're talking about <laughs> yeah uh, no i mean we don't know we don't know we're we're, we're talking to people now and you know we have mm -hmm. uh, we have representatives and other people but right. like you know it's it's uh every book gets picked up it's not okay. true. That's not true that every book gets picked up, but like, because options su such a big thing. I mean, like, look at you know the the biggest rated show on Amazon is The Boys. Like, the you know why the last man on Hulu, Sweet Tooth, like Netflix, Sweet Tooth was the biggest show on Netflix. It's like comics are a gold mine for TV and film right now. Like mm -hmm. everybody wants to be making an Avengers. Everybody wants to be making all this stuff, mm -hmm. and so like yeah, they're just like oh this is. This is an IP that has a built-in fan base that has mm -hmm. character designs that has an outline and a script it's... and in an, an ongoing <laughs> series they're like and it has sequels. They yeah. they just love it. And so like yeah. you know as soon as the book was announced and we'd shown the cover people were reaching out. But like that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't you know they buy a thousand times more than they can make. They buy things to keep other people from buying them. And like that's what you're navigating is like Who's the most likely to actually make this? Who's the most likely to actually, 
you know, care about this? Who is buying this not because they don't want, you know, like, does Netflix want to buy this because they don't like Am want Amazon to have it? Does Amazon want to buy this because they don't want, right. you know, Who would uh, have what, it for any reason? Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you have to navigate that stuff. Like, you know, the four, four kids walking to a bank, um, you know, is a movie, is in development to be a movie and it, it's pretty far along and like, we think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, like, until they're shooting the movie, like, we have a director, we have a script, like, we have a big director, we have a big script, they have the money, mm -hmm. like, we mm -hmm. have famous people producing it. Um, right. But until it's actually shooting, you're still just kind of like, I don't know if they're actually going to make it. Yeah. Like, things get to the one yard line and trip yeah. all the time. So it's silly to, yeah. like, it's like buying yeah. a lottery ticket. You're like, right, well, right. maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Things get filmed all the time, doesn't mean it becomes shows. Exactly. Yeah. There's, you know, like, I have a bunch of friends who have books that i love that have pilots that you know studio yeah. exec was like oh, i don't like this or studio exec changed like right. studio execs get real passionate about something and then get fired right. and the next person looks at what they have on their desk and go i don't know what this is i don't like it and get rid of it yeah. so exactly. you know, it's, it, it's always uh it's always one of those kind of things but uh lewis so that that means that you can buy like and you can actually bid on an option for four kids yeah. or uh okay, what's four dollars <laughs> you're the front runner right now yeah you can be you're in the lead <laughs> you're in the lead look, look at that Lewis. all right I'll go get my wallet four dollars <laughs> don't you don't have to send me the back to four dollars if i don't win i just want to put in four dollars oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. four dollars great, great deal <laughs> um when you know when we interviewed uh todd mcfarlane um a couple of weeks ago he mentioned um we mentioned to him like what what he sees himself in the next you know 20 25 years from now uh, i want to ask you the question too as well do you see yourself um doing this for the next 20 25 years or do you see yourself having a studio having a bunch of writers writing for you kind of thing um where do you see yourself in terms of like um writing yeah. uh books you know it's funny i was very i spent the beginning of my career being super goal oriented mm -hmm. and really like when i started i was like i want to make something and have it published and then i did that and i was like i was doing small steps where i was like i want to have something published and then i was like i want to have a, you know have a book that comes out and gets reprinted and it's like okay but my you know my first book had reprints and then you know i was like okay i want to do a story at marvel and then i was like well i want to do a you know a, a series at marvel and then i was like well i want to like be exclusive at marvel and then i was like i right. had a point where i was like my dream is and i would sit there and i would like sort of verbalize these things and be like this is my dream and i was like there was a point where i was like my dream is to write the punisher uncanny x-men and star wars and i i remember saying that i was like those are the things i want to write more than anything and like that's what i want to work towards and then I remember like a year later, I was like, oh, the things I'm working on right now are Star Wars, Uncanny X-Men and The Punisher. Like those are the books I'm writing. Um, and after that, I sort of didn't, I stopped doing that. I sort of stopped having a roadmap. Right, right. Um, comics is very easy to like sort of change things and have things get in your way and uh, spending too much time sort of focusing on, on where you want to be can become really frustrating and maybe right. you don't enjoy where you are. Mm -hmm. um, I've been very lucky and I sort of didn't want to take that for granted and be like, well, now my dream is to write Batman or whatever. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I, right. I just kind of, I'm like, I want to do stuff that's fun. I want to do stuff that just feels fun to me to do. Right. And, and in that, like, I don't have a Todd McFarlane esque, like I'm going to run a toy company and a studio <laughs> and an empire. Um, you know, Todd's amazing. And uh, I yeah. would be lucky to have one, 1,000th of what he has, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to do stuff I think is cool and hope that other oh, people. So you don't have Toys R Us backing you up anymore, man. Yeah, lots <laughs> of Toys R Us really ripped the rug out from under me. I don't know what to do. Well, um, before we end this uh, interview here, I want to ask you, and I actually want to start with you. And uh, for every interview that we have uh, after this, who's your um, who's going to be on your Mount Rushmore of uh, writers? Of comic writers. Comic writers. Uh, well, I mean. Artists and writers, I should say. Okay. Artists and writers. Uh, artists and writers. My Mount Rushmore of comics. I mean, it's it's hard because you want to do, like, you know, it's impossible not to be, like, Kirby. It's impossible not to be, like, Stan Lee. Right. People like that. Like Kirby's um, workload would kill you. Kirby's workload would kill anybody. It's like... Kirby's, and, hey, yeah. somebody has done it, the math. Anybody that does <laughs> yeah. Kirby's workload will kill them. Yeah, yeah. Kirby's Kirby's an impossible figure. And like obviously people like Kirby and Ditko and 
people like that are a huge influence to me. And, you know, like Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, like those guys, when I was a kid, like are people who were huge influence and still are. So like, I have to just have a ton of respect. Like, you know, Jim Lee was mm -hmm. one of my favorite artists when I was 10 and is one of my favorite artists now. And it's like, that's amazing mm -hmm. to me. Um, but for me personally, like, I feel like there's, there's an answer that's like, comics mount rushmore and then there's a person right. for me yeah i'm trying to think like the the artist who alan moore um 100 is on my mount rushmore brian bendis uh is on my mount rushmore um definitely we'll ben, yeah definitely yeah, yeah alan bendis, moore yeah alan, alan moore, moore definitely. bendis for sure um man I would, uh, uh like I your know, influences part. Yeah those, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah, those are my influences. Like the, uh, you know, art wise, like for me, it's always going to be Bernie Wrightson. Like Bernie Wrightson is, uh, oh yeah, an artist who I just could not. Uh, I still look at Bernie Wrightson art and like don't understand how he does it, and I'm still just like I don't understand how he made this. I don't. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's, and... it's like yeah. how. <laughs> yeah, like a Bernie Wrightson. I, I'll see Bernie Wrightson art I've never seen before now. And yeah. I still feel like I'm 10, like looking at a comic for the first time yeah. where I'm just like, I can't believe this is yeah. real. Like, how is this? What about uh, John Burns? John Burn, I love Burn. I, I put Claremont on the on there over Burn. Uh, and I know it's going more with a, the writer than, than art, but like Claremont's X-Men for me is is seminal. So Chris Claremont's probably on my Mount Rushmore. Right. Um, Burn is close. I love Burn, but like, I don't, I, there are other people who love Burn in a way that I don't. So I, I feel weird being like having Burn on there, but Burn is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, the Hernandez brothers, uh, Love and Rockets oh, yeah. is for me. Hernandez mm -hmm. brothers is a big one. Um, I have too many people already. When I'm not Rush Morris. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I know I'm forgetting people too, but like those are those are definitely big ones for me for sure. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 good enough. That's I mean, like there's a lot of there's a lot in there. I mean, like Jim, I, Jim I was Lee's at... probably on my Mount Rushmore actually. I'd put Jim Lee on there. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Don't worry, there's plenty uh, of space up in Mount Rushmore. Yeah, <laughs> there's plenty it's of a space whole mountain. It's, <laughs> it's a whole mountain, whole... man. <laughs> Multiple mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, well, I want to thank uh, I want to thank you, sir, for taking the time to actually uh, spending with us and ta talking about uh, what's the furthest place from here. Uh, just to let everybody know, too, as well, um, our exclusive variant cover with Mika Suwayan is now up for pre-orders. Uh, that is a big hit, uh, as you guys uh, heard. the um, the The record has been uh, has been a big hit too, as well. We have a bundle that's sold out. So, um, and I also want to mention that. Uh, all the copies that's being um, sold, the pre-orders that we had from October 8th to today is being signed by Mr. Uh, Matthew Rosenberg here for free. So, I mean, why not? Um, ever since uh, I made that uh, I made that uh, announcement, sir, um, thank you again for doing so because our sales just went skyrocketed in there. So, oh, that's awesome. um, so that, that's actually really great, especially for people who couldn't make it to conventions um those are the yeah, top reasons i mean why i'm not they were, i'm not they were really going that. to convention so if you want a signed book that's about as good a chance as you're gonna get <laughs> no definitely and get again, it now I'm, before he decides never to go back again <laughs> yeah i mean like again sir i mean like you know i want to thank you for that so i mean it's going to be a lot of books heading your way <laughs> um but uh no thank you for doing that too and then definitely helping out uh, shops and online stores too as well um i'm definitely looking forward to this book um you know moving forward hopefully in my opinion i, th I think that it should definitely keep going at least like 24 issues maybe i don't know we have, we have a big plan we have a big plan so big plans in or, this. So or, just, or just be the next saga and then take a four-year hiatus <laughs> right? just, yeah just yeah about life in total <laughs> That'd be nice. And then just come back right come after. Back it. and be the kings again, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, Matthew, Re uh, Ma Matthew Rosenberg in here. Thank you again for being in our show, sir. Especially right after we did um, uh, Todd McFarland there too, as well. Um, if there's anything else that you want to let everybody know, let us know now, sir. No, I just want to thank you guys, and you know, thanks for doing the cover. And and Miko's cover is so good. Uh, you know, it's it's always funny when when you do like the the retail exclusives because you're letting other people sort of decide what to look and when 
you know, you guys reached out to Image and were like, Miko's going to do it. We were like, oh, that's awesome. Miko's amazing. And then uh, it's just such a great cover. So we're, I feel really lucky to have that on a book oh, I no, wrote. We feel, we, yeah, we feel very honored to actually uh, be allowed to actually do that too as well. So thank you very much again. Uh, Lewis, any last words for you, sir? Thank you for letting Tim profit off all this. <laughs> So you could have denied him and if you ever contacted me i would have said don't let him yeah no his, his ego now. his ego you 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 think that that head fits in that screen no it's like he's backed up three miles away and it still oh, looks like he fills up that screen normally <laughs> not the oh, illusion well. This is going to get out of hand now. Thank you again, sir, for being on our show. And for everyone listening and watching, thank you again. And we'll be back again next week. Um, we will see you guys uh, next week.